Hi friends, can't lose weight? Let's talk about 10 ways to succeed and take the willpower out of daily food choices. Number one is to use smaller plates. The size of your stomach is smaller than what your eyes perceive. Normally that is about a quart of food or four cups. Your hand can hold roughly a cup of food and a normal eight inch plate can hold much more than four cups if you are piling the food on high. But a small saucer plate can hold much less. Have you ever gotten too much food when you're hungry and then you couldn't finish what was on your plate? What did you do with it? Many of us will actually finish it even though we're full. And to put less on your plate, you need to depend on your willpower. Willpower is hard to do when people are dangling desirable smells and sights and tempting you with delicious food. And this is why malls are a terrible place to visit if you're trying to avoid junk food. The good news is 40% of what you do on a daily basis is habitual. So controlling your environment, like using only small plates to eat all your meals, will set you free from having to rely on willpower for portion control. Did you hear how McDonald's is changing the Big Mac? The Big Mac was a blockbuster hit that started in 1968, really to serve steel mill workers in Pennsylvania. Notice how Americans also began to eat more calories around this time. I wonder if there's a coincidence. About 40% of Americans eat fast food daily. So when McDonald's decides to make their Big Mac 150 calories more, that's a big deal for America. 740 calories is nearly half of the calories a normal person should eat in one entire day. When people get more food, even if they are full, they tend to eat everything on their plate because no one wants to purposely waste food. People are taught to finish what's on their plate. So if you use smaller plates, then there is simply less to finish. Now I'm sure your parents drill this into you and they may have even told you about starving children around the world. I tell my kids one in five kids go to bed hungry in the United States. However, I only ask my kids to finish eating healthy foods like their vegetables, beans, and fruits. Remember, big plates, they make big piles. Have you ever been to a buffet? I've done that plenty of times. And mentally, you want to get your money's worth, so you want to pile up the food. But I always end up overeating, and I feel bloated because I force myself to finish things that I don't like. Now I look for the smallest plates to automatically limit my portions, and I really try to avoid eating at buffets. I had a neighbor once who was a sugar addict, and he could eat sugar straight from the sugar bag with a spoon. But he wasn't overweight because he only ate on small plates, and he did this on purpose to limit his junk food. Now, of course, if you keep going back for seconds and thirds, you may end up eating the same amount of calories. But if you're actively trying to improve your health and want to build a journey of healthy habits, then portion control is really hard to do because it's based on your willpower. And if you had that willpower, you would have already done it. So be your health CEO. Make your portion control just out of necessity by using small plates and getting rid of your large plates, bowls, and cups. This makes you more mindful of how many servings you're actually eating and it'll help you rethink what you're doing. If switching plates could do it, then everybody should be skinny, but that's not the case. So number two, select who you're going to eat with because your family family and your friends can make you eat more of the wrong kind of food. This is called social facilitation. Do you have co-workers who like to order out, drink fancy sugary coffee lattes in the morning, and eat dessert for every meal every day? Then there is peer pressure. If you don't eat, they assume you're on a diet as if that was a bad thing to do. It's really hard to resist peer pressure. And I know physicians who would bring donuts and bagels to nursing stations. These are dopamine driving foods. Dopamine is a motivational hormone that makes you feel good. But like caffeine, the more dopamine you get, the more you need to eat to get the same feeling. So over time, you will end up eating more and more of those types of foods that stimulate dopamine. When you're hungry, willpower will just go out the door. So if you don't want to be tempted and rely on willpower, then remove yourself from any situation surrounded by food. Sometimes that means you have to eat alone. And this is why I pre-eat before I go to parties or restaurants so that I'm never hungry. This prevents me from overeating. This concept also also works for prepackaged foods, which is number three. Buy smaller prepackaged foods like smaller potato chip bags so that you don't have to use willpower.
power to stop eating. Really, who can eat just one chip? Of course not. And of course, it's best not to eat these empty calories, but the reality is people still love these foods. And even if you're vegan, studies have shown that simply buying smaller packages, you can reduce how much you eat. It's been known since the 1950s that few people don't finish a cookie. I don't think I've ever only eaten a piece of the cookie or left half a cookie. I don't think I've ever had any cookie leftovers. If someone starts a cookie, they usually finish it. And if you apply this psychology and you limit the size of your junk food, you've taken the willpower out of eating and stopping. Now, if you open that large package of snacks, you're gonna have to rely on willpower to stop eating. But processed foods don't have any built-in safety stops. Those foods are engineered with ingredients that make you want more, that give you that dopamine fix. Have you ever heard the term sugar bliss point? The concept of the sugar bliss point is how the food industry creates products to maximize enjoyment and encourages greater consumption. Too little sugar and the food isn't attractive. Have you ever tasted desserts that were so overpoweringly sweet that you couldn't eat them? That exceeded your sugar bliss point. But even before any sugar touches your lips, just by smelling and thinking about sugar can release dopamine in your brain. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure and reward and motivates us to do so many things in life from interacting with people to eating your cookie. This is very normal. And if you can't make dopamine, then you have a disease called Parkinson's. But overstimulating dopamine can create unhealthy addictive behaviors. As soon as sugar hits the tip of your tongue, dopamine is released and then a second bout of dopamine is released in your intestine. So thinking about sugar, smelling sugar, tasting sugar, and chewing and absorbing all the sugar releases more and more dopamine. This is very normal as your brain wants you to look for sugary foods as a source of energy. But in the past, sugary foods were hard to come by, restricted in nature to seasonal fruits or the occasional honey beehive. But now we have access to a diversity of processed sugary foods 24 seven and all year round on the kitchen counter, in your backpack or purse, in your cupboard, in your pantry, fridge, drawer, in in every gas station, hospital, grocery stores, and schools. Now, if you only consume a teaspoon of sugar with your coffee or tea, that's really no big deal. The problem comes when every meal has sugar and you're consuming it in your drinks, you're eating it in your meals, and you're dipping it in sauces. So the more you eat, the more you want it because dopamine keeps getting released to create this sense of pleasure. And it reinforces the behavior of consuming and finding more sugary foods as a reward. Over time, with repeated consumption of sugary foods, Foods, your brain becomes desensitized to dopamine and you need more sugar to feel the same pleasures. This is a dysregulation of the dopamine system, potentially contributing to addictive behaviors. If you find yourself eating junk food secretly at night, you are addicted. I've been there, especially with chocolate. This cycle of consumption, dopamine release, and craving causes people to overeat and become overweight. But what's worse than your weight are the metabolic diseases like diabetes, gout, and high blood pressure, which are all caused by the addiction to sugar. This is why few people can rely on willpower to stop eating junk food. Now, think about it. Do you need willpower to comb your hair, to put on your shoes, or brush your teeth, or to go to sleep? No, these are all built-in routines. All those behaviors at one time in your life release some dopamine. Have you ever looked in the mirror after you finished your makeup and combed your hair? and was very proud of how you made yourself up. Have you seen how toddlers are so excited to show off their new shoes? Those are all dopamine behaviors. Did you know that the modern day squeezable toothpaste was actually invented in the 1880s, but it didn't take off until the 1940s when Pepsodent created a refreshing ingredient called Arium, which was a marketing gimmick that they made up. That refreshing sensation got people to keep brushing their teeth because it made them feel good. That's dopamine. But Arium is actually an irritant called sodium alkyl sulfate. And if you are breaking out in your mouth or around your mouth, you should really check your ingredients in your toothpaste. So simply by reducing packaging size and not buying in bulk, you're taking the willpower out of mindless habitual eating and retraining your brain to be satisfied with smaller portions. But of course, eating healthier is always best. And that's why number four, you need to serve yourself nutrient-dense 
foods first. Now, there are several reasons to be mindful of your food order, and we're going to go over which foods are best to eat first. Now, even if you don't change what you eat, how you eat your food determines your blood sugar and insulin spikes. Now, remember, when your insulin rises and stays elevated, you will gain more weight. That is called insulin resistance, and that will make blood sugar control very difficult. And by the way, if you're using more insulin to get your blood sugar controlled, even if you have perfectly normal hemoglobin A1C numbers, that's not ideal. That's actually a sign your insulin resistance is getting worse. High insulin is inflammatory and accelerates aging. It accelerates the production of bad cholesterol, which is one driver of blocked arteries or plaques in your arteries called atherosclerosis, which is inflammation of the arteries. I commonly see people with type 1 or type 1.5 diabetes who are insulin dependent and have perfectly normal hemoglobin A1C numbers for years, simply because they keep using more and more insulin. However, chronic inflammation in blood vessels is like pouring chicken fat in your drain that will eventually plug your root pipes and prevent flow. And when this happens to your body, you first may have painful toes and feet called neuropathy, which are your nerves crying SOS for help because they're getting damaged. Neuropathy is an earlier sign your blood vessels are inflamed. Now, if your neuropathy suddenly goes away and you've done nothing different, then that may be the point of no return. And way before that happens, you should be seeing skin changes. You will have shiny, smoother, and thinner skin that feels woody and hard. And this is because your nerves are an integral part of the health of your skin. So when your nerves get damaged, your skin will change and they become more fragile. This is why we all should reduce sugar spikes and to keep them as low as possible. Now, just changing your food order to eat during a single meal can help to reduce sugar and insulin spikes. For instance, let's say you have a salad, steak, and white rice for dinner. If you look in this chart, let's say it's a romaine salad. Romaine is worth 510 points. Then the white rice, well, that actually didn't make it on the list, but I'm going to count it as white pasta at number 11. And then that steak is worth 21 points because it's similar to lean ground beef. And just by eating the romaine salad first, a leafy, non-starchy vegetable you can delay the absorption of that rice starch and can even prevent some of that starch from being absorbed because you're putting in a physical barrier. It's like compost in your stomach. It can be even more effective. You can eat foods rich with soluble fiber. Soluble fiber is kind of like flypaper that sticks to foods with calories. Soluble fiber foods will trap those calories so that you literally absorb less. So the best food order is always to start with low calorie, high fiber foods to build a large sticky barrier to trap some of the calories like starch. In addition to fiber, if you eat foods that are hydrated, filled with water, you will eat less food because that hydration will fill you up. And if you eat whole foods, you'll get phytonutrients, which are attached to the fiber. Phytonutrients also help to reduce your digestive enzyme activity, and it helps to buffer inflammation caused by other foods. And the soluble fiber that doesn't go to waste, when that pile gets to your colon, your gut microbes will go to town on it, and it can convert that now to powerful anti-inflammatory short-chain fatty acids or the energy molecules to help your colon move your stool. One of these molecules is called butyrate, which also increases your insulin sensitivity and it improves your mitochondria activity, which all together translates into lower blood sugars, elevated metabolism, and weight loss for you. It's really a triple win. But if you eat your rice first, you're going to break down that rice starch pretty quickly because... Digestion starts in your mouth. Your saliva has an enzyme called amylase that breaks apart amylose, the starchy, sugary food in rice and breads. And amylose is literally a long chain of glucoses. My son loves broken rice, which is actually worse than white rice because the blood sugar control is even less since it has more surface area exposed for amylase to quickly digest that food. Do you know how they make broken rice? Well, you just basically soak white rice and then you break up that raw rice with your hand. That's a layer of processing that makes food less healthy. Do you remember that table sugar is actually 50% fructose? Now, starch in rice is 100% glucose. And that's why when you eat rice, it actually spikes your blood sugar higher than if you eat table sugar. If you are gluten-free, then just know there's a lot of rice in gluten-free products. That rice has been broken down into a finer powder that increases the surface area to help those digestive enzymes quickly make that starch to glucose. 
Bread may look solid, but it's full of air holes, and that means that food is going to be easily accessible to your enzymes of digestion. And notice how when you get your bread wet, it quickly turns into mush. That's really how I gauge how quickly my blood sugars will spike. There should be actually a mush chart. Now, Rice Krispies are even worse than bread. They made that into a fine powder, glued it together, and then heated it up and injected air in it. This is why processed grain products like crackers, cereals, cookies, pastries, donuts, or even Asian savory dim sum foods have a high glycemic index and load. These lab creations in large factories or your kitchen factory can't fool your body even though they fool your brain. And these are nutrient-poor foods with lots of the wrong in calories to spike your insulin and blood sugars. And the food industry, they're always trying to create more fake products, like trying to sell you a wood table when it's fake. And you and I both know table made out of fake wood, that plywood, is not as hardy as a solid wood table. They're both made out of wood, but one is made out of wood crumbs. The way you protect your metabolism is to make sure you eat that salad first. Even in a buffet, whatever is served first tends to be consumed the most. And how many of you actually eat your vegetables last because you don't want to do it? Most likely that will end up in the trash. Have you ever had a showdown with your children and made them stay at the table until they finish their vegetables? They can be pretty stubborn. And my middle child, when he was four, had a fit when I put a centimeter broccoli on his plate. He didn't even eat it. He just didn't want anything green on his plate. Now, as a young adult with repeated exposure, he has no problems eating a giant salad or drinking kale juice. Don't give up. Children may need to be exposed to food 6 to 15 times to like it. Sometimes watching other kids can make trying something new more acceptable. As a kid, I hated salads until I was in the 8th grade and at that time, I decided I was going to lose weight and I was going to start by training myself to eat salad. My first salad was loaded with tuna and cottage cheese to cover up the taste of the vegetables. And one day, probably less than two weeks later, I realized I actually enjoy the crunch of salad. A person's taste buds can influence what foods they choose to eat. So children, they have very sensitive bitter taste buds, which become less sensitive as they grow older. I remember I couldn't stand green vegetables as a kid because they were so bitter. Now I enjoy blending a few bitter leaves to make my salads taste more gourmet. That's why I add mints and herbs to every salad. Now, if you enjoy bitter food, then you may be a super taster. Those are people who like more bitter foods. Maybe you are a thermal taster and prefer hot or cold temperature foods. Studies have shown that many Asians are both super tasters and thermal tasters. And maybe that's why they serve so many different types of bitter vegetables in restaurants. Now, men and women may have different taste buds too, or men prefer sweeter foods. Now, of course, this is all generalization and you may be different. But understanding your taste preferences, they're going to help you to be more mindful of how you can create an environment for success. And maybe refrigerating or warming certain things up can help you eat more of something that you don't naturally like. And this is number five, leave the tastiest food at the very end as a reward to top off the hard work that you did. You need to release a little bit of dopamine to get you to do it again. It's the same concept as working hard before you play. Have you ever tried to get your kids to finish their chores after playing? It doesn't work so well, does it? There's no dopamine release when doing boring chores. A good CEO of any company will have designed their company for success to help their people do their work easier. Now imagine if your boss designed the company where you work at to have your best interest in mind, giving you all the tools that you need at your fingertips. It's kind of like taking care of your kids and getting their backpack ready for school with paper, pencils, books, and that laptop. You're setting up an environment for success. You need to do the same for yourself. For your health and you need to pack on nutrient dense foods first. Now here's a nutrient density chart by Dr. Joel Furman in which he ranks foods from 1000 to 0. The most nutrient dense foods get a thousand points and they are green leaves because they have very little calories and lots of micronutrients to help reduce inflammation, protect your DNA, and feed your gut microbiome. These are essentially salads that many people eat when they are trying to be healthier and to lose weight. But obviously it doesn't work because many people quit eating the salads. Salad food is not sustainable 
if they're just full of green leaves. Now people don't have multiple stomachs to digest these green leaves and you're going to be hungry and you're not going to want to continue your diet because these nutrient dense foods are very low in calories and they don't give you that dopamine high. Now this chart has green, red, and orange columns and the green columns are very low calorie whereas the red and orange columns have more calories and I eat whole foods from all these columns and will use these foods in red and orange to help me enjoy Enjoy my green column foods. Otherwise, I can only eat so many leaves by themselves. They are boring to eat. Have you thought about why you're willing to spend twice as much money buying prepackaged foods? It's because of convenience and we're all pressed for that time. And this is why number six, make good food convenient for you to eat so that you lose the right kind of weight and get healthy. Now this means you have to spend a little bit of time prepping every week. Now prep includes buying the nutrient-dense foods, pre-washing them and putting them out for you to look at. When you put your vegetables in the drawer to keep them fresh, they are out of sight. And when they're out of sight, they're out of mind. And by the time you think about eating them, they're probably rotten. However, if you pre-wash them, let them air dry, and then put them in a bag with a paper towel, they'll not only last longer, but you'll be more inclined to eat more because they're already conveniently prepared. That's actually how I get myself to eat more vegetables. It's still a work in progress for me every day. And the opposite should be done with junk food, which is number seven, make it inconvenient to access that junk food so that you don't need willpower to stop eating it. Sometimes we just eat out of habit and simply by buying less junk food or putting it higher up in your cabinet or burying it in your freezer not only makes it out of sight but it also makes it inconvenient for you to access it and this will help you eat less food and it takes the willpower out of stopping. Try to change up where you store your junk food so you can't easily find it. This city moved around container of Hershey Kisses just two meters from its original site and people ate nearly two thirds less kisses. The UK banned candy bars in 2014 at the checkout aisle. Apparently it worked out and impulse shoppers spent a lot less. Now unfortunately, we're probably not gonna see this kind of ban happen in America, but you can just have your own personal ban by not buying anything at the checkout counter. Number eight is to use the power of diversity. Now I'm sure you've heard eat a variety of foods, but this isn't good if you're trying to lose weight. Notice how in the grocery store, there's an endless variety of processed and ultra processed foods, but the whole food, the produce section, that hardly ever changes. It's the same thing every day. Every time I go to the grocery store, there's always some kind of new processed food creation with some shiny package that I haven't tried and I'm always tempted to try it. And that's why people recommend shopping only on the periphery of the store. Avoid all the center aisles. Studies show that even in developing nations, people who store a diversity of foods in their home, they have the wrong type of foods as they're full of sugar. Ultra processed foods last long and have a longer shelf life because they're really not real food. A lot of their ingredients have been processed out. But if you limit your options for snacks, you'll simply naturally eat 25% less. And that's why I only keep one flavor of popcorn in my cupboard. Now, number nine is to apply the power of diversity to healthy foods like those that are nutrient dense and especially have high soluble fiber. Now I know that the foods in the green on this chart are hard to eat. They do spoil faster, but I also know I just can't eat cups of kale. It's really, really boring and I won't eat much of it. And the next day I'll want to eat less of it. And this is why I have a variety of foods in my house and I eat a little bit of everything daily. I probably have on hand at least 14 different foods from this list of green in any given week. A diversity of texture is also really important to keep in mind. If all you ate was kale, mustard greens, collard greens, and Swiss chard, they taste different because of their flavors, but they have very similar textures. And that's really boring to eat. And for me, I would eat more greens if I added bell peppers, asparagus, mushrooms, tomatoes, strawberries, sweet potatoes, and zucchinis. Now, number 10 is similar to using small plates, and that is to use small utensils like a small spoon or a fork or even try chopsticks. It's just another way that you can be your CEO and design a successful environment to help you in this weight loss journey. You're simply implementing portion control, but you're taking the willpower out of portion control. I grew up with chopsticks, so I eat just about everything with chopsticks, and I find it forces me to chew longer because I take more bites 
bites compared to scooping a load of food on a spoon. These ideas, they all take the willpower out of daily food choices, but you still need to choose which foods to buy. You can only go so far with your health journey if you don't change your food quality. Watch this video to learn which foods will help you lose weight faster.